So, that uh, concludes our discussion on the principle of increase of entropy. We uh, now uh, come to the last module in the course which is thermodynamic cycles. So, what we will do here is um, uh, look at the three uh, cycle uh, cycles that we have already considered. That is, um, during the definition of heat engines, we looked at three different uh, cyclic processes executed by each one of those heat engines. Okay. Number one, the, uh, the uh, Rankine cycle, the basic Rankine cycle. Number two, the basic Brayton cycle. And number three, which is uh, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle executed by the reverse engine. Okay. So, we look at two direct heat engines and two, I am sorry, one reverse heat engine okay. and examine the cyclic process executed by each one of these engines. So, our basic idea would be to um, look at heat supplied, heat rejected, thermal efficiency and entropy generated as a result of operation of each one of these heat engines. Let us start with the uh, Rankine cycle. You may recall this uh, illustration from before. So, basically uh, water is the working substance and the system is what is in the uh, in the loop. Okay. So, we have seen this already before this is a heat engine, direct heat engine. Okay. Now, let us look at the uh, uh, process undergone by the system uh, in TS coordinates. Okay. So, state 1 as you can see here is at entry to the uh, turbine. So, in the basic Rankine cycle, uh, water is a saturated vapor at entry to the uh, turbine. And if it is an ideal cycle, then uh, we expect it to execute an isentropic process from 1 to 2 s like this. In the actual case, because of internal irreversibilities, the state point uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the process in the turbine will lie to the right of 2 s. So, the actual process would look something like this. So, this is the turbine okay, 1 to 2 or 1 to 2 s. Now, we go to the condenser where the working substance loses heat and uh, as it loses heat because it is undergoing a change of phase, its temperature remains uh, constant. So, the heat rejection process uh, continues until uh, the water has uh, become saturated liquid at the condenser uh, pressure and condenser temperature. Okay. Now, uh, 3 to 4 s is the pumping process as we can see here. So, 3 to 4 s is the pumping process. If the pump is ideal, then uh, we will reach state 4 s from 3. In the actual case, due to internal irreversibilities, we will reach state 4. After this, we have the heat addition process to reach state 1. So, this is the heat addition process in the boiler 4 s to 1 or 4 to 1 is the heat addition process in the boiler where heat is added. Now, in the case of the ideal cycle where there are no uh, irreversibilities, uh, the amount of heat that is supplied uh, during the heat addition in the boiler looks like this. So, this would be the, we first erase this. So, the amount of heat that is added uh, during the heat addition process in the boiler for an ideal cycle would be the area under the process curve. So, that would look something like this. So, that is the, so this is the uh, heat that is added. Now, um, the heat that is rejected during the uh, heat rejection process in the condenser looks like this. Let us use a different color for that. So, again it is the area under the process curve. So, the net heat that is added uh, during the cycle is the difference between these two and that is this inner area here. Okay. Let us denote that with the and since the uh, system executes a cyclic process, we know that 
cyclic integral delta q equal to cyclic integral delta w. Since this area that we have shown in green is the uh, net heat added in the cycle that is also equal to the net work that is generated during the cycle. So, the area enclosed in this uh, in green or shaded in green is actually the net work that is um, generated by the cycle. Okay. Now, in the basic cycle as I said before the um, uh, working substance leaves the boiler as a saturated vapor, but uh, in the actual cycles it will always leave with a certain amount of superheat and the TS diagram for the superheat uh, cycle Rankine cycle with superheat looks like this. So, the pressure remains the same now state point 1 has moved further up on the isobar corresponding to the boiler pressure. So, basically this pressure this corresponds to the uh, boiler pressure and this corresponds to the condenser pressure. So, the cycle operates between these two isobars. Notice that by uh, allowing a certain amount of superheat in the cycle we actually improve the efficiency of the cycle. Okay. In, uh, how do we accomplish that? Now, if you look at the additional amount of heat that has been added in the cycle assuming reversible process you can see that this would be the additional amount of uh, since we used the red to indicate that that is uh, So, this is the additional amount of heat that uh, we have been able to add as a result of uh, superheating the steam. Now, the additional amount of heat that has been rejected looks like this. Now, notice that uh, the increase in the amount of heat rejected is not commensurate with the increase in the amount of uh, heat that has been supplied okay, because the um, uh, isobar is uh, steep in the superheated region. Notice that the isobar is steep in the superheated region and horizontal in the phase change region. Remember the pressure remains constant in the phase change region because it is steep as we move along this uh, isobar in the superheated region the amount of heat that we can add increases uh, quite a lot and this usually results in uh, higher efficiency because the amount of heat rejected still is in the two phase region. So, it does not increase that much. Okay. Since the heat rejection process remains in the two phase region, the amount of heat rejected still does not increase that much because the isobar is horizontal here and the isobar is steep in the superheated region. Okay. So, which is the reason why the Rankine cycle is almost always operated with a considerable amount of superheat. And in fact, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, today's thermal power plants operate uh, in a ultra supercritical uh, cycle where the peak temperature exceeds the uh, critical temperature of uh, which is, this is the uh, this is the critical temperature of water. So, it exceeds even the critical temperature. So, the higher the temperature, the higher the efficiency. This was something that we saw when we were discussing second law of thermodynamics. When we looked at the best way to increase the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. Although lowering the temperature of the cold reservoir was the best way, in reality we mentioned that uh, efficiency gains have been uh, achieved by increasing the temperature of the uh, hot reservoir which means we keep increasing this uh, temperature as much as possible both the pressure as well as the temperature in the boiler. Okay, let us look at a simple example involving uh, the uh, uh, Rankine cycle with superheat. So, we are given the boiler pressure 160 bar and condenser temperature is given. We can easily look up the, the saturation pressure corresponding to this. Okay. Steam leaves the boiler with 212.6 degrees Celsius of superheat. That means that the temperature above the saturation temperature is 212.6 degrees Celsius. Determine heat supplied, net power produced, thermal efficiency and entropy generated. Uh, we assume steady state operation and neglect Ke and Pe changes. So, we can uh, easily evaluate or retrieve or calculate 
property values corresponding to each one of the uh, state point in the cycle. State 1 is a superheated state. <coughs> State 2 is most likely will be in the saturated mixture region. State 3 is saturated liquid at 45 degree Celsius. State 4 is, uh, is usually a compressed liquid. Remember uh, for state 4 is because it is a compressed liquid you may recall that for this state S of T comma P is approximated as SF of T, the uh, uh, specific entropy of the saturated liquid at the same temperature. And this um, has to be evaluated once again by using the fact that this is a compressed liquid state. Okay. So, H at 4 is you may recall that we had d h equal to I am sorry d h equal to p d p. So, if I apply this to process uh, 3 to 4 s. So, if we apply this to process 3 to 4 s we get h 4 s minus h 3 equal to V 3. We assume that the specific volume remains a constant because it is a uh, liquid and this may be written as P 4 S minus P 3. Now, P 4 S is nothing but the boiler pressure, P 3 is the condenser pressure. So, we may evaluate H 4 S from this expression. We have to use this expression to calculate H 4 S because the temperature at the end of uh, the pumping process 4 S is not given. Okay. If the temperature at the end of 4 S were known then we would have evaluated H 4 H 4 S if T and P are both known then we would have evaluated this as U F of T plus V times V f times P. Because the temperature is not given, we actually use this expression to uh, evaluate uh, the, uh, uh, the specific enthalpy at state 4 s. So, all these once these values are available it is relatively straightforward to uh, calculate the quantities that are asked. So, heat added in the boiler per unit mass flow rate of uh, steam may be evaluated as uh, H 1 minus H 4 s because the boiler is operating at steady state we apply S F E E and we can get this. Heat rejected in the condenser uh, again per unit mass flow rate may be evaluated like this. Uh, turbine work is nothing but H1 minus H2S. So, that comes out to be 1407.84 and pump work again uh, may be evaluated as 16.15. You can notice how small the pump work is compared to the work that is generated by the turbine. Okay. So, the net power is the difference between the turbine work and the pump work and that comes out to be 1391.69 per unit mass flow rate which is why we have per kilogram here. And the thermal efficiency of the cycle is nothing but net work divided by heat supplied and it is 42.68 percent. Now, entropy generated in the inverse uh, may be evaluated as delta S system plus delta S surroundings. The system here as I already mentioned is the water that uh, executes the cyclic process in this loop. Since the water executes a cyclic process the entropy change of the system is 0. Entropy change of surroundings is a result of uh, heat that is supplied uh, in the boiler and heat that is rejected in the condenser to the low temperature reservoir. So, here we assume the uh, high temperature reservoir to be at the uh, highest temperature in the cycle. So, here this is the highest temperature in the cycle. So, we take this to be uh, T h and again uh, we take this to be 
Tc. So, if I actually extend this, so this is my Th, the highest temperature in the cycle is Th and the temperature at the condenser is Tc. So, we may now evaluate the entropy change in the surroundings. Since heat is uh, supplied by uh, the boiler, there is a reduction in the entropy in the surroundings during this process. Since heat is rejected uh, in the condenser, there is an increase in entropy of the surroundings in this process, but the net sum comes out to be plus 1.9632 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay, so, there is a net increase in the uh, in the entropy of the surroundings as a result of uh, entropy generation due to internal. Uh, in this case, because the system is executing a cyclic process, there is no contribution from there. So, this is uh, largely uh, this is all due to external irreversibilities in the heat transfer process. What we will do next is uh, look at um, uh, an analysis of uh, the Braden cycle, which is also a power producing cycle and also look at the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, which is a power absorbing cycle. So, the next cycle that we will look at is the Brayton cycle and uh, you may recall that uh, we um, uh, discussed this also uh, earlier when we discussed um, the notion of a heat engine. So, here you may recall that air is the uh, working substance and it undergoes a cyclic process as illustrated here. Uh, the uh, uh, cutaway view of a gas turbine engine is uh, shown here. So, you can see the compressor section which is uh, this one and the circumferential combustor uh, may also be seen. So, this has several uh, units uh, placed around the uh, circumference and then you can see the uh, turbine section. So, normally the, um, uh, there may be few more turbine sections or depending upon the power rating um, you may have only this many. Note that the number of compressor uh, uh, blade rows is actually much more than the uh, number of uh, turbine blade rows because as we said earlier the process that the fluid undergoes in uh, the turbine section is actually uh, an expansion process. So, the pressure gradient is favorable from a fluid mechanics perspective whereas the process that is undergone by the fluid in a, uh, in a compressor section is actually a compression process which means the uh, flow must actually go against the pressure gradient is. Uh, adverse and the flow must go against that. So, that is always uh, somewhat more challenging from a fluid mechanics uh, perspective, which is why we try to compress in, uh, in many stages with a small amount of compression each stage. So, that um, the uh, fluid mechanics of the uh, design can be made um, uh, much better. Okay, so, here only the uh, rotor blades are shown. So, here you see the, so this is the the uh, shaft or the uh, rotor and you can see the blades are mounted on the uh, rotor. The stator blades which actually come in between these uh, rotor blades are not shown in this, uh, in this exposed view and you get an idea of about the size of the uh, blades and the rotor and so on uh, from this uh, figure. Okay. So, in the uh, simplest form of the cycle as we mentioned earlier air is taken into a compressor. So, the air actually executes a cyclic process in a closed loop. So, the air at entry to the compressor usually is at atmospheric pressure and temperature okay? and then it is uh, compressed to a high pressure uh, and a relatively high temperature due to the compression process at uh, state 2. Uh, heat is then added in the combustor, uh, fuel is burnt and uh, heat is added in the combustor. Note that when we actually treat this as a heat engine, we treat the combustor as a heat exchanger. So, the air is in an enclosed circuit and heat is added to the air. So, uh, in this manner only we will be able to uh, uh, take the air as a system. In a realistic uh, gas turbine engine as shown here in this combustor, uh, normally fuel is uh, sprayed into the air stream. So, the air is actually mixed with the fuel, the fuel is then burnt and the air stream then undergoes further expansion in the turbine. So, the actual process in, uh, in, the, case of an, uh, in the case of the gas turbine engine is actually not um, uh, a closed or um, cyclic process. Air is drawn in from the ambient, compressed, fuel is then uh, injected into the air stream, burnt and the combustion gases are expand, uh, expanded through the turbine and expelled into the 
atmosphere. So, uh, we cannot really treat that as a heat engine. Okay. So, what we are looking at here is an idealized concept of a gas turbine engine, okay, where the air uh, circulates in a closed loop. So, heat is assumed to be added in the combustor, uh, which is modeled as a sort of heat exchanger. Okay. So, after addition of heat, the air is at uh, high pressure and high temperature before entry to the turbine. It is expanded in the turbine and then it uh, comes out at uh, low pressure and low temperature. So, here instead of uh, exhausting this into the ambient, in the case of a heat engine, we take this to a, a cooler or a condenser where heat is rejected to the ambient and the air is now at uh, almost the same temperature as the ambient temperature and at the end of the expansion process here, it is almost at the same pressure as the ambient pressure. It can, uh, the air can now repeat the cycle. Okay. So, if we illustrate the, uh, uh, the cyclic process undergone by the air on a TS diagram, it looks like this. So, if the cycle is ideal, then the compression process in the compressor is ideal and goes from 1 to 2 s. It is isentropic, goes from 1 to 2 s. So, heat addition takes place at constant pressure in the combustor. So, we go from state 2 s to state 3. Uh, if the expansion process in the turbine is also ideal, meaning isentropic, then we go from 3 to 4 s and then the heat rejection takes place in the, uh, in the cooler along 4 s to 1. That is the ideal cycle. In the actual cycle, the compression process tends to be uh, adiabatic, but with internal uh, irreversibilities. So, the process actually goes from 1 to 2 in this case and in the case of the turbine also, the uh, expansion process can be assumed to be adiabatic, but with internal irreversibilities. So, the entropy increases as a result of the uh, irreversibilities and the actual process goes from 3 to 4. Now, in the case of the ideal cycle, as we saw before with the Rankine cycle, um, the heat added during the cycle assuming uh, that there is no, uh, I am sorry. assuming the process to be ideal, the heat added during the cycle is given by the area under this curve. Okay. So, we may show this to be like this. That is the heat added. Now, heat rejected may be uh, shown on this uh, diagram like this. So, that is the heat rejected and the difference between the two is the net heat and that would be this area here. So, that is the net heat that is supplied uh, during the cycle and from uh, first law for a cyclic process, net heat is also equal to net work in the case of the ideal process. So, uh, the area that is uh, shown uh, shaded in pink is actually the net work that is developed uh, during the cycle, uh, assuming all the processes to be ideal. So, we are looking at the simplest possible cycles, uh, many additional um, uh, enhancements to the cycle are always carried out to improve the efficiency of the cycle. Uh, you will probably uh, learn those things in the next level thermodynamics course, the effect of pressure ratio on the performance of the cycle and the effect of the, uh, the peak temperature of the cycle which occurs at uh, state 3 before entry to turbine effect of that on the efficiency of the cycle and the uh, specific work output of the cycle. These are very, very uh, important uh, performance parameters of the cycle. So, generally for these cycles, the uh, performance parameters are efficiency, uh, specific work output. So, this is the uh, specific work output that is work output, net work output per unit mass of working substance. This allows us to uh, draw inferences on uh, scaling aspects of the cycle. So, if I can generate um, uh, say a large amount of power with a small uh, amount of uh, working substance, that means that the plant size can be small. So, this actually affects the specific work output affects the plant or equipment size. 
So, that is an important parameter. And of course, entropy generated during the process is also an important uh, quantity and we would like to have an idea on uh, how much entropy is generated uh, as a result of uh, the cyclic operation in, uh, in the Brayton cycle. And we will uh, work out an example and show how these things may be evaluated. So, an ideal Brayton cycle operates with a pressure ratio of 30 and a peak temperature of 1300 Kelvin. Air is the working substance and it enters the compressor at 100 kPa and 300 Kelvin. So, we are asked to determine heat supplied, power output, thermal efficiency and entropy generated. Okay. So, we are given that P1 is 100 kPa, T1 is 300 Kelvin. The pressure ratio Rp is given to be 30 and T3 is 1300 Kelvin. Notice that the uh, Brayton cycle also uh, just like the uh, Rankine cycle operates between these two isobars and the pressure ratio of the cycle is nothing but the higher pressure, compressor pressure or compressor exit pressure divided by compressor inlet pressure. That is the pressure ratio of the cycle that is given to be 30. So, assuming a compression process to be ideal, we may uh, evaluate T to S as the temperature at the end of an isentropic compression process and we can get that to be 793 Kelvin. Notice that P2S over P1 is equal to 30. Similarly, T4S which is the temperature at the end of an isentropic expansion process in the turbine may be evaluated as 492 Kelvin and again the pressure ratio P4, I am sorry P3 over P4S. So, this is equal to 1 over 30 and the temperature at the end of the expansion process is 492 Kelvin. Now, by applying a steady flow energy equation to each one of these components in turn, we can evaluate the, uh, the required quantities. So, compressor work, uh, specific compressor work is nothing but H2S minus H1 and that comes out to be 498 kilojoule per kilogram. Heat added in the combustor per unit air mass flow rate is 512.263 again by application of SFEE to the combustor. Specific turbine work output comes out to be 816.387. Okay. The biggest difference uh, between um, the uh, Rankine cycle and, um, and the Brayton cycle is the amount of power that is uh, uh, consumed by the compressor versus the amount of power that is consumed by the pump. So, here you can see that the compressor consumes more than uh, half of the work that is or power that is generated by the turbine. In contrast for the uh, Rankine cycle, we saw the pump work to be negligibly small compared to the turbine work. Okay. So, that is a big difference the uh, as a, that and the difference comes as a result of the working substance. Here we use air as the working substance and that is a highly compressible substance. So, the power required to compress air uh, through a pressure ratio of 30 is quite high. On the other hand, in the case of the Rankine cycle, we are pumping water and since water is almost an incompressible liquid, uh, uh, the power required to increase the pressure of water is actually uh, quite small. So, heat rejected may be evaluated as 194 kilo joule per uh, Kelvin. So, the net power that is uh, generated uh, during the cycle uh, comes out to be uh, 318.27 that is Wx dot turbine minus Wx dot compressor 318.27 kilo joule per kilogram. So, the thermal efficiency of the cycle is nothing but net work divided by heat supplied and that is 62.13 percent which is much higher than the uh, the value that we saw for Rankine cycle. And this is typical of uh, gas turbine power plants. They have uh, much higher efficiencies compared to Rankine cycles, but the amount of power that can be generated in a Brayton cycle is uh, not as high as what may be generated in the case of a Rankine cycle. Because the Rankine cycle works with water and um, the enthalpy changes that we are looking at there of the order of uh, thousands of kilojoule per kilogram. So, the power generated consequently is also much higher in a Rankine cycle. Whereas, here for instance, uh, we are working with air and the um, uh, enthalpy values that we are looking at are only of the order of about uh, a few kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. In fact, all this may be evaluated as 
this quantity itself may be evaluated as C p times T 2 s minus T 1 because we are assuming the gas to be calorically perfect. So, you may recall that C p uh, is of the order of about 1 uh, kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So, enthalpy changes that we are talking about are not very high. So, consequently the power uh, that can be generated or specific power that can be generated by gas turbine uh, engines are relatively smaller compared to uh, the Rankine uh, cycles. Now, <clears throat> the overall entropy that is uh, uh, generated during the cycle may be evaluated as delta S system plus delta S surrounding. Here, the air that executes a cyclic process um, in the closed loop is the system. Since it executes a cyclic process, delta S for the system is 0 and the change in entropy for the surrounding may be evaluated as minus q h dot over t h where q h dot is the uh, amount of heat that is rejected uh, I am sorry amount of heat that is supplied uh, in process 2 3 and since the surroundings are supplying heat to the system the entropy of the uh, surroundings decreases which is why we see a negative sign here. The entropy change of the surroundings during the heat rejection process is plus q c dot over t c because heat is being rejected to the surroundings and the algebraic sum of uh, the two comes out to be 0 0.2526. Okay. So, delta S system is 0, delta S surroundings um, the entire uh, uh, change or entropy generation is due to uh, a change in surroundings of the entropy in this case and that is positive as it should be. In the case of the Brayton cycle, we took uh, uh, TH to be like just like the Rankine cycle, the highest temperature in the cycle. So, this we took to be TH and the ambient temperature was taken to be uh, the uh, uh, TC was taken to be equal to the ambient temperature in this case.